Hello and welcome, I'm Rebel Knight Fox and this is my guide on how to play the Hunter role in Evil Dead the Game. get into it i just want to say a huge thanks for all the support recently across all platforms that includes the streams on twitch and content on both tiktok and youtube i am really trying to put out great evil dead content and push for that 1k subscribers by the end of the year so if you are enjoying these videos or find them useful then please consider hitting that subscribe button and dinging the notification bell to stay tuned for future content as it all helps and is very much appreciated this is my first in a series of guides where I'm going to provide an in-depth look at how to play each role within Evil Dead. I'm going to try and keep these guides in a similar format, easy to understand, but as informative as possible. All information within this guide is accurate at the time this video was filmed. If and when any vital changes come to the game that drastically changes the way that a role is played, I'll make a newer edition of that guide to update it. I myself am a survivor main, even though I do play a fair amount of demon, most of my hours is on survivor. Generally, I try not to label myself to main a specific role, as I try to pick my survivor choices based on team composition. But even with this, I would say Hunter is most likely my strongest role, the role in which I usually perform the best and feel most comfortable in. And this is why I've decided that my first role guide would be for the Hunter. In this guide, we're going to cover the following topics in this order. What is the job of a hunter? When you should pick a hunter? Weapon choices? Build foundations? And then finally, advanced tips and tricks. The hunter role is one of two classes whose primary job is damage output. Whilst the other damage class of warrior is focused on close up damage, hunters output their damage from range. Although hunters can use melee weapons, you want to ensure that the vast majority of your output is via the means of a gun. This is due to the fact that a hunter receives a roll standard buff to range damage of 150%, whilst having a nerf to melee damage down to 70%. This is the sole reason why you want to focus all your damage from range unless you are dry on ammo. Too often do I come across a hunter that feels that instinctive pull to get stuck in when everyone is slaying away a possessed unit, it's natural human instinct to want to get amongst it, but you will be a far bigger asset to your team if you stay back and pick at their brain with a blunderbuss. Aside from damage, one of the other huge benefits to playing the hunter role is the incredible stamina they have. Due to the amount of stamina they can have, you really should be the last person on your team going down in any situation, unless of course the demon hyper focuses you and your team fail to body block or heal you. If you learn to perfect the dodging of demon attacks, you have an incredible amount of sustainability built into your class. Against an average demon player, it is entirely possible to solo an objective without the need to waste all your ammo. When it comes to abilities of the hunter characters, you can break them down into two main types. Player based abilities and team based abilities. Kelly's ability specifically is based entirely around sustainability being able to keep yourself alive via continuous dodging when the demon is choosing to hyper focus you. Amanda's ability is more damage based and while this can be good for your team, your ability only affects yourself and so only contributes towards your own output. Hunter Ash's ability is by far the most team focused. By being able to depossess basic units and possess survivors, you actively contribute towards countering the early game basic unit possession being wiped out by a possessed survivor in the late game and so this benefits your team throughout the match. Ed Getley's ability is also team based. By allowing you to disable traps it is another which helps counter early game basic unit possession by reducing the amount of units at the demon's disposal, forcing them to place manual portal. Not only this, but Ed's level 25 ability increases the rarity of loot throughout the map which is another ability that benefits the team as a whole. If you're someone like myself who opts to pick their survivor last to benefit their team as much as possible rather than insta locking a class then you may want to know when are the best occasions to pick the hunter role now a lot of this is to do with team building and understanding team compositions if you want to learn about team compositions or understand them more 
Check my team composition video link to the top right. There are several compositions that a hunter can fit into and work well with. The main leader to look out for is Aninobi. Her ability directly buffs all range damage within her aura, and so she is the leader that provides the biggest benefit to hunters. If someone locks in Aninobi, then you cannot go wrong with picking a hunter. Picking two hunters alongside an Aninobi and Cheryl forms a very strong hunter composition. If, however, a warrior is picked alongside Aninobi, then a hunter is still a very strong pick and would form a balanced composition. This would allow the warrior to body block for you and tank damage while you output incredible numbers from a distance. Even leader Ash gives benefits to hunters, and so playing alongside him in a balanced composition is still strong. Lord Arthur, however, is a different kettle of fish. For the moment, his ability is bugged where it is buffing range damage as well as melee, and because of this, you can still technically run a hunter alongside him for now, but once his ability is fixed, it will no longer be viable to pick a hunter with him in the leader role. With weapons, there are several routes you can go down depending on your own individual playstyle, the builds you're using, and what you shoot better with. If you are building towards balance while damage, then the weapons you want to look for are the boomstick, the double barrel, and the shotgun. They all deal good damage as well, but are primarily picked up for their balance while numbers of 90 base across the board. If you are looking for higher damage with less fuss around balance bar, then the weapons you want to be looking for are the hunting rifle, the blunderbuss, and finally the crossbow. Now the crossbow is a difficult one. Despite it being the highest damage dealer from base in the game, it is widely thought to be the hardest to use due to its projectile property. But if you can put the time in to learn the muscle memory for firing this weapon, then I thoroughly recommend it. Not only does it output great damage, but it is a stealth weapon also, which means you can fire it in the early game without alerting the demon. The last few weapons are more about fire rate. These include the revolver, the lever action rifle, the pistol, and the saw gun. These are all relatively weak weapons and use up a lot of ammo. However, the revolver is a bit of a dark horse. And I've been doing a lot of testing with this gun recently to compare it against the best damage dealer, which is notably the blunderbuss. In terms of base numbers, the blunderbuss has a damage of 235, a one-shot clip, a rate of fire of 1.3 seconds, and a reload time of 1.8 seconds. This gives you 235 damage every 3.1 seconds, or a DPS of 75.8, excluding headshot multipliers. The revolver, however, has a damage of 150, a six-shot mag, a fire rate of 1.0, and a reload speed of 1.8 seconds. This gives you 450 damage every three seconds for half a mag, or a DPS of 115.3. And now I need to do more testing on this, but as it stands from a numbers point of view, a revolver seems a more beneficial weapon to go with, providing you can hit your headshot. So from just the base numbers, it is suggested that the revolver actually carries the most damage potential. But naturally, this comes with a lot of variables, including consistent accuracy, if you can maintain a good stock of ammo throughout the game, and also whether or not you get interrupted whilst firing, which would slow your fire rate down and thus drop the DPS. But those are the numbers, so you're free to make your own decision on it. But for me, I would be choosing a legendary revolver over a legendary blunderbuss, just as my personal preference. Now, when it comes to build foundations for the hunter role, pretty much all four hunters can be built the same all practically identical in most cases. There are some variations between some of the hunters specific to their abilities, but for the most part, you can go safe with using this build featured here. I'm gonna quickly run through the general skills I would use on any hunter regardless of their ability, just as a basic foundational guide. Now at tier one, we've got long shot, which increases the range of ranged weapons. This isn't entirely important, and so you just put the one skill point into it just to unlock the next tier. And going across the top line first, at tier 2, we have hollow points. This increases ranged weapon damage. Now, this is naturally vital to the hunter role if you want to be maximizing your damage output. So, I would suggest putting all four points into this skill. Now, with the tier 3 and tier 4 across the top, it's entirely down to your own personal preference. You can either go with the top two or the bottom two towards wig splitter. Either way, I suggest just putting one point into them. For me personally, I like to increase a little bit of balance while damage, and so I've gone along the bottom line. 
putting just one point into stopping power. It isn't really necessary to put all three points into this because we're going for a damage build and not a balance bar build. And the second one along is firm grip. Again, I've just put one skill point into this. It reduces the recall of ranged weapons, which to be honest, they don't have much recall anyway, and it isn't really prevalent within the game. So it's simply just to get along to the next skill. And then lastly, along the top, we've got wig splitter. This increases headshot damage. I would suggest putting all four skill points into this to maximize the amount of damage you're getting when you're hitting those headshots, which you should be working on anyway. Now on the third line down, I've gone with three points into Fear No Evil. This reduces the amount of fear received from any source by 20%. The reason I've gone with this on pretty much every hunter build that I've got is purely because I want to reduce the amount that I'm likely to get possessed within a game and wipe out my team. Along the third and fourth lines, we haven't gone with any other skills in that area. This is because I just don't feel they're as beneficial as some of the other skills that feature within the tree when it comes to making a basic foundational damage based build. So going further down along the fifth row, the first skill we're going to go into is staying power. This increases your maximum stamina. Now you only need to put one point into this and I'll explain a little bit more about it when talking about one of the other skills, but essentially the maximum amount of dodges you can get on a hunter now is five and you only need to put one point into staying power to achieve this. Putting two more points into it is irrelevant and it won't do anything towards your dodge count. Now with the tier three skills in this section, I would highly suggest going along the bottom bar for this one. And this is Artful Dodger, and that reduces the stamina cost of dodging altogether. When putting three points into the skill, it reduces the stamina cost for dodging by 35%. This combined with the one skill and staying power allows you to achieve that maximum five dodges that you can get on a hunter now. The next skill along that line is deadly up close. Now I've put three points into this purely because a lot of the time you're going to be within a five meter range to a boss if you're trying to output damage. Because of the fact that teammates tend to get in the way during shots, you want to try and get as close as you can to the boss to ensure you're hitting them headshots. And because of this, it's worth having deadly up close putting out an extra 20% damage when within that range. And last but not least, and quite ironically, the last skill that we have is Last Chance. And I've put all four points remaining into this skill. And this increases the damage dealt by the last bullet in a gun by 20%. Now there's a few variables to this perk. The reason why it's so good is if you happen to run a crossbow or a blunderbuss, being as they're a one shot weapon, you're going to be doing an extra 20% damage for every shot that you make. This is what makes the crossbow and the blunderbuss so powerful. But even if you don't and you choose to run something like a revolver or a shotgun, which is two bullets, at least you know that the last bullet out of the chamber is always going to be an extra 20%. So it's definitely worth having this over any other skill on the tree. And also when running this skill with Amanda, it's very, very strong to make sure she only has one bullet left in her chamber before you pop her ability. This means that when you unload, every single bullet will have 20% damage for the entire duration of her ability. But that is what I suggest as a general foundational build for any hunter role within the game. This build would work with all four hunters and will set you a steady foundation for doing the maximum amount of damage you can possibly achieve. Obviously find what works best for you, but this is a good place to start and then you can start tweaking it to your own personal preference around that. The first thing I feel I should talk about when it comes to playing hunter at advanced level is headshot accuracy. Now some of you may get touchy about my opinion on this, but hear me out as I do have reasoning. In my opinion, if you are going to play the hunter role effectively, then in an average game with an average amount of demon interaction, you need to be averaging 30 headshots a game, but ideally looking for higher. And honestly, if you are unable to get over 10 to 15 headshots when playing as a hunter, it probably isn't the role for you and you are likely damaging your team by doing so. Now, obviously there is some variation to this. Specifically, if you are wanting to learn to play Hunter, then you're not going to start off with a 30 headshot average by no means. You're going to take time to perfect your mechanical ability with the game. And so if this is the case, then don't overthink this headshot count too much. This is entirely circumstantial, but if you are someone who's played the Hunter role, quite an amount of time and you're still only averaging 10 to 15 headshots then i would suggest either working on the headshot count itself and making sure your accuracy is improving or try switching out for a different role this takes into account the fact that you are someone who actually wants to win games if you just play the game for the pure enjoyment then obviously this doesn't matter and just play however is fun for you 
But with all of this in mind, what I would suggest is taking your time. Really focus on trying to hit those headshots. If you take twice the amount of time to pull the trigger, because you're practicing hitting the head, but you successfully land the shot, this is more beneficial in the long run than just pumping away and running the potential of missing some shots completely. It will also help improve your skill and muscle memory over time, thus making you a better hunter in the long term. One thing that I don't see enough players doing within this game is paying attention to their sensitivity settings. Now I can't vouch for what settings are available on consoles as I play on PC, but on PC there are two specific settings relating to your aim as a survivor, and these can be found under the game tab. The first is third person camera sensitivity, which relates to the speed at which you look around when simply running around in third person and on not aimed in. The second setting is called aiming sensitivity. This relates specifically to the speed in which your camera moves when aiming down sight. Now you will need to play around with these yourself to find what works for you, but here are what I have mine set to. Bear in mind I am on PC and so my mouse DPI settings has an effect on the outcome of this also, but take some time to find the best settings for yourself. It generally has improved my headshot rate since I adjusted these settings. Now there has been a lot of talk since the game's release about hunters and their dodging. Even though they receive the nerf towards their dodges and stamina in general, hunters still have a great amount of sustainability built in via their dodges. But so many people still use them incorrectly, specifically when fighting possess units or bosses. The vast majority of new players still feel the need to dodge backwards or away from the demon to stay alive, and this is wrong. The problem with this is that if a demon knows their combos, you are essentially staying in a direct fight path for them and as such are consistently within fighting range as well as having to use one dodge for every hit they attempt. Essentially one well aimed puke animation cancel and it's game for you. When fighting possess units or boss units, the vital key to make your dodges more effective and save more stamina is to dodge straight at the unit. 9 times out of 10 this will end up with you effectively dodging 2 hits at a cost of 1 dodge. And this is because when you dodge straight at a unit, the demon is forced to spin his camera 180 degrees to track you again whilst trying to make his second swing in the meantime. The animation for his second swing needing to spin around causes you to be just out of their range. To make sure you are out of their range, you want to dodge straight at them, then turn your camera around whilst walking backwards or away from the demon. Whilst walking back, you'll regen a sliver of stamina and then you can repeat the process for the third and fourth swing. If this is executed well against an average demon, you could literally do this all day without wasting a single bullet. There are a few things a hunter can do within a game to burn up the demon's time if they are insistent on committing to you. Some of these are possible by any class, but hunters have the easiest time doing it. The first thing is notably window looping. Now for those of you that don't already know, windows are one of, if not the strongest counter to unit or boss possession. At this time, the demon has no way to vault through a window when possessing something in the game. This means you can kite them to a building, through the building and out a window on the other side, forcing the demon to walk all the way around to which you would then simply vault back inside the building. This wastes both the demon's time and their infernal energy. But most smart or knowledgeable demons know not to engage in this and should leave you once they realize that this is the tactic you are employing. With this in mind, a tactic for early game that I've been working on is to use hunters as a diversion. Essentially, when starting a match, a hunter would walk straight towards the first map area whilst the team goes to a good loot location in the opposite direction and furthest from the likely demon swarm. Once the hunter has the first piece, they would get straight into a car to grab the demon's attention and drive straight to the second location. However, they would need to make sure they are taking the most urban route possible. And by this, I mean to try and consistently have houses nearby in case you get into trouble. Because that way you can jump straight into window looping till it's safe to go. You would rinse and repeat this until all the pieces are found then drive straight to where your team has been looting to collect all of the pink F and valuable items. If the demon did commit to you at some point, you can instruct your team to get the other pieces whilst you keep the demon busy. And naturally, this tactic would only work in a communicating team who are working together and is unlikely to work in solo queue due to the sheer amount of coordination needed. Another small way for a hunter to distract a demon is to force a split push. 
to make the demon want to attack the objective being soloed by the hunter, allowing your team to finish the other safely, but as soon as the demon is on you, simply hop in a car and drive straight to your team. This essentially just burns down objective time, allowing your team to have an easier fight at their objective and wasting less resources doing so. One last small trick for you is if you find yourself evading the demon but finding it hard to manage your stamina, once depleted and if you have plenty of basics around, put yourself into a finisher iframe whilst the demon is recovering from stagger. You will regen your stam bar during the iframe allowing you to go straight back into dodging. Now that is the end of my guide on how to play the hunter role within Evil Dead the game. I hope you've enjoyed it and found some if not all of the information useful. Try to keep it all in mind and work on it during games to improve your ability within the hunter role. And as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm trying to hit that 1k subscriber mark by the end of 2022. So if you have found the video useful and want to see more content like this in the future, hit that subscribe button for me and ding that notification bell to stay tuned for the future content and guides that are coming out. If you have any tips or tricks that you use that haven't been mentioned here, feel free to let me know in the comments below and it may feature in a future video with a personal shout out for yourself. But for now, I hope you all have a great day, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.